Hey, hi, hello. This is Cam from Spock Sanctuary, and I am joined today with our intern, Olivia, and our co-founder, Cole. Um, and today we are going to be talking about ball python care, and you'll get a little bit of extra information about just snakes in general along with that. But um, just wanted to make sure that folks were able to access information about how to care for a ball python and make sure that they're living a happy, healthy life. So let's get into it. One of the frequently asked questions about how to take care of your ball python is what should their enclosures be like? Yeah, easy rule of thumb for most snakes, um, and this also applies to ball pythons, is that they should be able to stretch out diagonally um, through the bottom of their enclosure. Um, for arboreal snakes, then you can do diagonally upwards through their enclosure. Um, but ball pythons are not arboreal, so across the base, that means if you have a five foot snake, you're looking at a three by four. Um, so you might have thought that you don't need to use the Pythagorean theorem um, when you were in school, but this is a good use of it just to make sure that your snake is getting it, the space that it does need to be able to thrive. As a general rule, I would say a four by two by two is appropriate for most ball pythons. Males will Pythonhood, only, yeah. yeah, males will only get about four feet. Um, females get longer, and so if you have a sizable female, she's gonna use some of that space. I mean, obviously every animal is a little bit different. Um, but just making sure that they're not, you know, shoved into a corner all the time. Um, if if they're going to use the space, give them the space, you know. Absolutely. It's always better to overestimate than underestimate because a snake will make use of the space that they're given. And if you see that they're only hanging out in, like, this 60% of their enclosure and they don't want the other 40%, then you can downsize. But um, it's better to give them more space to make sure that they're not stunted or... Um, overstressed from not being able to comfortably exist in their environment. Mm -hmm. So with that enclosure, what kind of like decor, hides, stuff like that do you need to have in it? So there's a big misconception about ball pythons that they will just like in, in the wild, and there, this is somewhat based in, in fact, um, but ball pythons in the wild will go into termite mounds and hunker down and wait for prey to come to them, or they will go into rodent burrows, eat all of the rodents, and then just live in that burrow for a while. Um, while that's true, the big thing is they can do this, and they can do that, or they sometimes do those things. That doesn't mean that they're always going to be hunkered down. Um, now, most ball pythons probably will hunker down for a good part of the day. They are, um, every ball python is going to be out at different, you know, points. But with that, um, providing a good variety of hides is huge because um, they will use them. Depending on how they're feeling one day, they're going to be in the warm side under, like directly under the basking spot. Other days, they might be in on other hides. We've found that a lot of the time they like to get in hides that they squeeze into. Um, if you give them too big of a hide, they're not going to feel secure. And the other thing with just generally with snakes is they have like the log hides that are you know, there's an open side on both ends. Typically, snakes don't feel as secure in those hides, and they'd prefer if they would just had one entrance, and they will, you know, sit in there, and they'll know that they are safe. Mm -hmm. So make sure to provide, at the very least, a few of those hides, um, and if they want to use other hides, they can, but um, we've found the most success with that type of hide. Some snakes, if they're not, like, feeling really in love with the hides that they do have, they might dig underneath um, a sturdy decor, like a, a water dish or something, and create their own hide under there. Um, so having a substrate that they can kind of dig through is also really great for being able to address that. So what kind of lighting and heat would they need? Yeah, so with a ball python, um, despite the fact that they are probably going to spend a good amount of their time in hides, um, they do come out, and they do still need that day-night cycle. So um, giving them a light that will turn on 12 hours a day and then off for 12 hours at night, um, a timer is a really good way to make sure that that's consistent. We prefer to use a halogen bulb because it also provides heat to the snake over their basking spot, and then they can choose to either hang out inside the hide and feel like that 
um, kind of ambient warmth under it, or they can climb up on top of the same hide and, and truly bask. They also definitely don't get harmed by having UVB um, based on how much time they spend outside. You might not need like a hefty UVB bulb for your snake, um, but it also helps kind of double down on that day-night cycle. The big thing is that they are getting heat and they are getting a day-night cycle. Mm -hmm. And if those two things are being met, then you're in good shape. A pretty common practice in ball pythons is to give them a under the tank heat mat and call that good. Um, instinctually, they understand that digging down is going to get them farther away from the heat. Um, and also reptiles don't have the same connection in their brain that heat and pain can be associated. So as they get like, as they continue to hang out on this heat mat, they're like, oh, this is kind of warm. Oh, also I kind of hurt, but they don't connect those two things happening. And so they don't process that they need to move off of the heat mat to relieve that pain. And so we see a lot of really nasty burns from snakes, either from an under the tank heat mat that isn't on an appropriate thermostat or like heat rock. Those are, those are fairly problematic. And um, a heat mat can be mitigated with a thermostat, but they still do need that day night cycle. And putting it under the tank is going to be pretty um, contradictory to their instincts. So putting it on the side allows them to make that stronger association between what it feels like they should be doing and what's actually happening. What is an appropriate diet for your ball python? Ball pythons eat rodents. Um, in the wild, they're going to be eating African soft fur mice, um, which is something that you can get in um, captivity. There are ASF breeders, but by the point that your ball python is older, that um, African soft fur isn't going to be big enough to sustain them on a single meal because you're looking for 10 to 15 percent of their body weight every meal once a week and so if you can't get an asf big enough for that um, they're going to be expensive pretty fast and so transitioning over to rats as early as possible in your ball python's life can help to make sure that you can feed them a meal that is appropriately sized for them um, and while bigger rats cost more than smaller rats one big rat it costs a lot less than lots of small rats to fill that same need in their diet. And the last question is, how do you read your snake? How do you know what they like? With ball pythons specifically, they're pretty chill. Um, I have yet to find ball pythons that are super, super um, angry compared to other snakes, I will say. Um, you know, you always have individuals, but... Um, a big thing with that is knowing what to look for. And what I mean by that is snakes don't have limbs. So um, most of what you're going to be looking for is in their head and neck. Um, if they're, you know, wanting to curl back and they're always trying to roll into a ball, um, that is not a good sign. That's usually, you know, stress response. They get their name ball pythons because if they're stressed, they roll into a ball um, and they, you see, are sort of hunker down. Uh, one thing that we look for in snakes in general is how much they're flicking their tongue. So if a snake is flicking their tongue a lot, it's a little stressed. If they're flicking their tongue a very small amount, it's pretty, it's, they're pretty stressed. If it's not too crazy, they're just generally flicking it out every once in a while. They're just collecting information. Um, usually when a snake's flicking its tongue a lot, it is trying to collect as much information because it's scared and trying to figure out its predator or whatever stressing it out. Um, or if it thinks that you're bringing food, it's trying to collect information about that food. Um, is that food something I want to eat? Those sort of things. Um, so watching body language um, and watching how much it's flicking its tongue is huge. There is um, something in ball pythons called being head shy in most snakes. Um, but ball pythons are especially easy to read on this. Um, but if they are head shy, then they're not going to want contact um, from either one side of their head or from two sides of their head. So they might feel extra constricted if you're like holding above and below their head within a few inches. Um, and they'll kind of freak out a little bit and kind of pull their head away from you um, just to try to get it somewhere that they feel secure, like wrapped up inside their own body. Um, if that is the case, don't be like discouraged by that. Um, a head shy ball python can be gradually warmed up to feel 
um, comfortable with that, but it's definitely something that you kind of have to take at their pace. And if they do get overstressed, slow it down. Realistically, a head shy ball python is not any less of a good snake than a ball python that's not head shy. So the only only big difference there is that like our ambassador ball python, Marcella, is not head shy, which means that she's a little more comfortable working with kids who are not aware of what that means, and so they might hold her closer to her head. And so having her be not head shy means that the experience for both of them is less stressful. Thank you guys today for coming and learning about ball pythons with us and some some general snake facts. If you liked what you saw today and you would like to see more of it, don't be afraid to hit like and subscribe to see more videos like this or leave any questions that we missed in the comment section below. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to reach out and have a great day and we hope to see you guys soon.